Monoidal Categories and Their Representations, Lecture 2, Monoidal Categories. We start with the classical definition of a monoidal category. Definition, a monoidal category is a tuple, C, tensor product, I, alpha, lambda, and rho, where C is a category. Tensor product is a bifunctor on C, which means it's a functor from C cross C to C. I is a fixed object on C. Alpha is an isomorphic natural transformation from the composition of the tensor product with itself, where the starting component is inserted on the left, to the composition of the tensor product with itself, when the starting component is inserted on the right. So it's a natural transformation between two functors from C cross C cross C to C. Lambda is an isomorphic natural transformation from the functor given by tensoring with i on the left to the identity functor on C, and rho is an isomorphic natural transformation from the functor given by tensoring with i on the right to the identity functor on C. So these are natural transformations between endofunctors of C. Terminology I is called the unit object or the identity object. Alpha is called the associator. And lambda and rho are unitors. Lambda is the left unitor and rho is the right unitor. This datum is supposed to satisfy two axioms. The first axiom is called the Pentagon axiom, and it says the following. Given arbitrary four objects W, X, Y, and Z of C, there are various ways to bracket the tensor product of these four objects. The first way is to tensor W with X, then with Y, and then with Z. To this bracketing, we can apply the associator in two different ways. We can apply the associator for W tensor X, Y, and Z, and get into the bracketing where first we tensor W and X, then Y and Z, and then we tensor the outcomes together. Alternatively, we can apply the associator for W, X, Y, and tensor it with the identity on Z, to get the bracketing when we first tensor X and Y, then tensor it with W, and then tensor the outcome with Z. To this later bracketing, we can apply the associator for W, X tensor Y, and Z to get the tensor product of W with the outcome of tensoring first X and Y, and then tensoring it with Z. To this bracketing, we can apply the identity on W tensored with the associator for X, Y, and Z to get the bracketing where you first tensor Y and Z, then tensor it with X, and then tensor with W. To the same bracketing, we can get from the bracketing W tensor X tensored with Y tensor Z by using the associator for W, X, and Y tensor Z. So we get such a diagram with five vertices, so that's why it's called the pentagon diagram, and this diagram is supposed to commute. So this is the first axiom, and then the second axiom is called the unitality axiom, and it looks as follows. For any objects x, y in C, we can form the following two tensor products. We can tensor x on right with i, and then tensor the outcome with y. Alternatively, we can tensor x with i tensored with y. We have the associator map for x, i, and y between these two bracketings. To the first bracketing, we can apply the right unitor for x, tensored with the identity on y, and end up in x tensor y. To the second bracketing, we can apply the identity on x, tensored with the left unitor for y, and also end up in x tensor y. And this triangle diagram is supposed to commute. So these are the two axioms of a monoidal category. Here is a prototypical example. Let R be a unital ring. Considering the category R mod R with capital M of all RR bimodules.
consider the bifunctor of tensoring over R on this category. And the object I given by the regular RR by module R. Define the associator alpha in the following way. Given three RR by modules X, Y, and Z, we have the map from X tensor Y tensored with Z to X tensored with Y tensor Z. And this map is defined by sending the element X tensor Y tensor Z to X tensor Y tensor Z. Define the left unitor lambda from R tensor X to X by multiplication. So it sends R tensor X to R X. Define the right unitor from X tensor R to X also using multiplication. So we send X tensor R to X R. Then both axioms in the definition of a monoidal category are trivially satisfied. And therefore this tuple of R mod R, the tensor product over R, the regular RR by module, and the three maps alpha, lambda, and rho as defined here. So this tuple is a monoidal category. So here is a special case of this example, which is usually used as a prototypical example for a monoidal category. Assume that R is a commutative ring. In this case, the categories of left and right R modules coincide. And using this, we can embed each of these categories into R mod R by setting that the right action of R on a bimodule coincides with the left action of, on, of R on this bimodule. So this embeds both left modules and right modules into bimodules. Please note that this embedding is not an equivalence of categories. Notation, let us denote by B the image of R mod inside R mod R given by this embedding. Observation, if X and Y are in B, then the tensor product over R of X and Y also belongs to B. Proof, for an element R in R, X in X and Y in Y, we have the following. If you multiply R with X tensor Y, then by definition, this is equal to Rx tensor Y. Since X is in B, then Rx is equal to XR. So we get XR tensor Y. Since tensoring is over R, XR tensor Y is equal to X tensor RY. And since the bimodule Y is in B, X tensor RY is equal to X tensor Y R, which by definition is equal to X tensor Y times R. Consequently, the category B, which is just an LS of the category R mod, together with this tensor product, the regular RI by module R, and the maps alpha lambda rho from the previous slide, this category is a monoidal category. So here is a terminological example to explain the terminology monoidal category. Let M be a monoid with the multiplication map given by star and the identity element E. Consider the category CM, whose objects are exactly the elements of M and whose morphisms are only the identity morphisms on all objects. So the morphism set between two different objects is simply empty. Define the tensor product as our multiplication star and define alpha, lambda, and rho using the identity maps. So this endos the category CM with a structure of a monoidal category. And conversely, given any essentially small monoidal category, C tensor product I alpha, lambda, rho, the set of isomorphism classes of objects in C is a monoid with respect to the multiplication induced by the tensor product. And the identity element in this monoid is the isomorphism class of the identity object, I. So this explains the terminology, how we can get a monoid from a monoidal category and how we get a monoidal category from a monoid. Here are some further examples. 
The category of sets with respect to the Cartesian product as the tensor product and a fixed singleton as the identity object. The category of small categories with respect to the construction of product category as tensor product and a singleton category with one object and the identity morphism as the identity object. Any category with finite products or finite coproducts with respect to this products or coproduct structure as a tensor product and the corresponding terminal or initial object as the identity object. In particular, any additive category is a tensor category with respect to this additive structure. The category of all endofunctors of a fixed category with respect to the composition as the tensor product and the identity functor as the identity object. The category of all algebras over a fixed commutative ring R with respect to the tensor product of algebras as a tensor product and the R algebra R as the identity object. So here are also two special cases of R mod, all vector spaces over a field or all finite dimensional vector spaces over a field. Both these form naturally monoidal categories. And another special case is the monoidal category of all abelian groups or all finitely generated abelian groups. Now let us discuss the definition which is given in the course book. So we will call it AGNO definition. According to this definition, a monoidal category is a tuple, C tensor product I, alpha, and iota, where C is a category, tensor product is a bifunctor on C, I is a fixed object, alpha is the associator, and iota is an isomorphism from I tensor I to I. The datum of a monoidal category is supposed to satisfy both the pentagon axiom for the associator and the following unit axiom for i. The endofunctors of C given by tensor product with i on the left and te the tensor product with i on the right are supposed to be equivalences of categories. Let us now compare these two definitions. First of all, the classical definition implies a GNO definition. So the classical definition of the monoidal category indeed implies the GNO definition of a monoidal category. So assume that we have a classical monoidal category, a tuple C tensor I alpha lambda rho satisfying the pentagon axiom and the unitality axiom. We can take as iota the left unitor map for the object I it is an isomorphism. And the unit axiom follows directly from the fact that the classical definition requires both the left multiplication with i and the right multiplication with i to be isomorphic to the identity functor. So it is very easy to see that the classical definition applies a GNO definition. Conversely, we need to do some work. So assume that we have a monoidal category C tensor product I, alpha, and iota according to the EGNO definition. We need to define the left and right unitors lambda and rho. By the unit axiom, we know that tensoring with I on the left is an autoequivalence of C. So in particular, it's also an autoequivalence of the category of all endofunctors on C. We have a natural transformation from the endofunctor on C, given by tensoring first with I and then tensoring with I again, to the endofunctor given by just tensoring with I, and this natural transformation is given by first using the inverse of the associator for I, I and our given object, followed by applying iota tensor the identity map. So we can define now lambda as the pre-image of the composition under the equivalence of tensoring with I on the left. Similarly, we define rho as the pre-image of the composition of 
alpha for a fixed object and then i and i, followed by the identity tensor, the iota, under tensoring with the our identity object i on the right. And directly from the definition, we see that both lambda and rho are invertible natural transformations. Let us now investigate how the unitors interact with the tensor product. Lemma. For any object x in C, the map lambda for the object i tensor x is equal to the identity on i tensor with the map lambda restricted to x. And similarly, rho restricted to x tensor i is equal to rho restricted to x tensor the identity on i. Proof. Since lambda is a natural transformation, the following diagram commutes. So we start from i tensor with i tensor x, and here we use the identity on i tensor lambda x to go to i tensor x. Alternatively, we can use lambda on i tensor x to go to i tensor x. And from i tensor x, we go to x by lambda x. And since lambda is a natural transformation looked at the vertical maps, this diagram commutes. In particular, lambda x after lambda i tensor x should be equal to lambda x after identity on i tensor lambda x. But since lambda is invertible, it follows that lambda restricted to i tensor x equals to the identity on i tensor lambda x. And the second equality is proved similarly. Now let us prove that Agnos definition implies the classical unitality axiom. For this, we consider the following big commutative diagram. We start with a tensor product of x with i, then again with i, and then with y. And then we can write all five different ways to bracket this tensor product, and they are connected by the associator maps, as in the pentagon axiom. And now in the middle, we take x tensor i tensored with y, and x tensored with i tensor y. So we have a map from the first corner. We can apply the right unitor for x tensor i with the identity on y to end up in x tensor i and then tensor with y. And from this corner, we have the identity on x tensored with iota and then tensored with the identity on y. Between these two bracketings, we have the associator. And then for, from these three corners, we have a map to x tensor i tensor y. So from here, the map is rho x, so it gives us x, tensor the identity on the second factor. From here, we have the identity on x, and then we take the left unitor for i tensor y. And from this corner, we apply identity on x and identity on y, and in the middle, we apply iota. So we consider the following diagram. And since tensoring with i is an equivalence, it is enough to prove that the bottom left triangle of this diagram commutes. So the bottom left triangle gives us the unitality axiom between the objects x and i tensor y. Since tensoring with i is an equivalence, i tensor y gives us a general object in category C. So it's enough to prove that the left bottom triangle commutes for any x and y. Let us note that all morphisms in our diagram are isomorphisms. So the outer pentagon by construction commutes because we have the pentagon axiom. The two quadrangles in the diagram, so this quadrangle and this quadrangle, they commute because alpha is a natural transformation. If you look at the definition in this quadrangle, alpha is a natural transformation between the functors given here and here, and similarly in this quadrangle. The upper triangle commutes by the definition of rho. So the upper triangle is given simply by the definition of rho here on the first factor, tensored with the identity on y. 
And then the right lower triangle commutes by the definition of lambda. So here in the right lower triangle, we have identity on x, tensor with the definition of lambda. Therefore, the whole diagram commutes, and in particular, it follows that the left lower triangle commutes as well. And this completes the proof that agnos definition implies the classical definition. Now, let us investigate further the interaction between the unitors with tensor products. Proposition, for any objects x and y in C, the following two diagrams commute. So we can start with the identity tensor x and then tensor y. Using the associator, we go to the identity tensor x tensor y. And then from the first guy, we apply lambda x tensor the identity on y to end up in x tensor y. From the right guy, we directly apply lambda for x tensor y, and we end at x tensor y. So the claim is that this diagram commutes. And we have a similar diagram for the right unitor. So x tensor y tensor i by the associator can be mapped to x tensor y tensor i. And in the first case, we directly apply the right unitor. In the second case, we apply the identity on x and then the right unitor for y. And this diagram also commutes. So we will prove the commutativity for the first diagram, and the second one is similar. Proof? Let us consider the following big diagram. Again, we draw the pentagon axiom for i tensor i tensor x tensor y. And then in the middle, we have i tensor x tensor y in two different ways to bracket this tensor product. So we have the associator between these two guys. So we have the pentagon axiom on the outside of this pentagon. So here from the top left corner to i tensor x tensor y, we use rho i to go from the top left corner to this middle part. So here we use lambda x to contract i tensor x to x. So here we use rho i. So here we use lambda x. And here we use lambda x tensor y. So this diagram is quite similar to the diagram which we used in the proof of the previous proposition. Okay, and now we need to prove that the bottom right triangle commutes, because this triangle is, is exactly the first triangle in our proposition tensored with i. And tensoring with i is an equivalence, so that's okay. Again, we know that all morphisms are isomorphisms, and that the outer pentagon by construction is given by the pentagon axiom. So it commutes because of the pentagon axiom. Similarly to the previous proposition, that two quadrangles commute since alpha is a natural transformation. The upper triangle commutes by the unitality axiom. This is exactly the unitality axiom for i, i, and x, with, which is tensored with the identity on y. And the left lower triangle also commutes by the unitality axiom. So this is the unitality axiom for i, i, and x tensor y. So this means that the whole diagram commutes, and so the lower right triangle commutes, giving the claim of our lemma. This allows us to compare the unitors when restricted to the identity object. Corollary. The maps lambda and rho restricted to i coincide, and they both coincide with the map iota. Proof? From the previous statements, we have the commutating diagram when we start from i tensor i tensor i, with two bracketing connected by the associator, and we go to i tensor i, using the left unitor on i or on i tensor i. We have such a commutative triangle, we have a similar commutative triangle for the right unitor. And from the definition of i, we also have a similar commutative triangle where the map from i tensor i tensor i to i tensor i 
is iota tensor the identity on i. Using that lambda restricted to i tensor i is equal to the identity on i tensor lambda i, which we already proved, we get that this map, lambda i tensor the identity on i, is equal to rho i tensor the identity on i, and is equal to iota tensor the identity on i. Since tensor in with i is an equivalence, it follows that rho i is equal to lambda i is equal to iota. And this completes the proof of this corollary. Now we can establish uniqueness of the identity object. Given a monoidal category, C tensor product I, alpha, lambda, and rho, the claim is that the identity object is unique up to isomorphism. So this means the following. Assume that we have a different monoidal category with the same underlying category, the same tensor product, the same associator, but possibly different identity object I prime and different left and right unitors, lambda prime and rho prime. The claim is that there is a unique morphism from I to I prime, such that lambda is equal to lambda prime after C tensored with the identity, and rho is equal to rho prime after the identity tensor with Xi. Moreover, this morphism Xi is an isomorphism. So note here that Xi tensor the identity is a morphism from the factor of tensoring with I to the factor of tensoring with I prime on the left. And similarly, identity tensor Xi is a morphism from tensoring with I on the right to tensoring with I prime on the right. Proof. So we define Xi as a composite of the following two maps from left to right. So from I, we have rho prime evaluated at I inverse, which goes to I tensor I prime. And from I tensor I prime, we have lambda evaluated at I prime, which goes to I prime. So this is a map from I to I prime. Clearly, this map is an isomorphism. So we will only check the property for lambda, and the check for rho is similar. In order to check the property for lambda, we consider the following diagram. So we have the following end of functors on C. We have the identity functor. We have the functor of tensoring with I prime and with I. Then we have their composition, first tensor with I prime and then with I. And then we have the functor of tensoring with I tensor I prime. And we have the following natural transformations between these functors. So lambda goes from tensoring with I to the identity, lambda prime from tensoring with I prime to the identity. We have the associator, which goes from tensoring with I tensor I prime to the composition of first tensoring with I prime and then with I. We have lambda evaluated at I prime tensor with something, which goes from the composition to tensoring with I prime. And we have the identity on I tensored with lambda prime, which goes from the composition to tensoring with I. And finally, we also have lambda on I prime tensored with identity, which goes from tensoring with I tensor I prime to tensoring with I prime. And we also have rho prime evaluated at I, which goes from tensoring with I tensor I prime to tensoring with I. So here in this diagram, the outer quadrangle commutes since lambda is a natural transformation. So we have lambda here, lambda here, and we have here lambda prime and here the identity tensor lambda prime. So the outer quadrangle commutes. The lower triangle commutes by the unitality axioms. So we, we use here lambda prime or rho prime to I prime, which stays in the middle. So this is the unitality axiom. And the upper triangle commutes by one of the previous propositions, because this is lambda restricted to a tensor product, which we can rewrite using the associator as lambda restricted to the first component, and so on. Hence, the whole diagram commutes, and in particular, this right quadrangle 
commutes. And this right quadrangle gives exactly that lambda is equal to lambda prime after our map given by tensor in with psi. So we can see our map psi here on these two sides of this quadrangle. So this proves existence. Now we need to argue for uniqueness. For this, we know that the isomorphism lambda gives rise to a monoid homomorphism, which we denote by phi, from the endomorphism monoid of the identity object to the endomorphism monoid of the identity functor on C. If we apply this monoid homomorphism and evaluate the identity and the functor at I, we get the regular CII module. So in particular, it means that phi is an injective map. Since I and I prime are isomorphic, this we already established, we also get that the set of all morphisms from I to I prime is also a regular CII module. From the injectivity of phi, it thus follows that different morphisms from I to I prime give rise to different natural transformations from I tensor with something to I prime tensor with something. As both lambda and lambda prime are invertible, it follows that psi is unique. And this completes the proof of uniqueness. Remark, conversely, let C tensor I alpha lambda rho be a monoidal category. Then, Fixing an object I prime in C and an isomorphism psi from I to I prime, we have a new monoidal category, C tensor product I prime alpha lambda prime and draw prime, where lambda prime and draw prime are taken from the following equalities. So lambda prime is defined so that lambda is equal to lambda prime after psi tensor with the identity and draw prime is defined such that rho is equal to rho prime after identity tensor psi. And finally, let us discuss some properties of the endomorphisms of the identity object. We start with the following lemma. Let's see be any essentially small category. Then the endomorphism of the identity functor on C is a commutative monoid. Proof? Let alpha and beta be two elements in the endomorphism of the identity functor on C. Then we can consider the following square. Identity on C goes by alpha to identity of C, by beta to the identity of C, by alpha to the identity of C, and here by beta to the identity of C. If we take this square and evaluate it at any objects of C, we will get a commutative square by the definition of a natural transformation. Both beta and alpha are natural transformations, and so we will get a commutative square. But this means that alpha and beta commute, and this establishes our lemma. Corollary, for any monoidal category C, the endomorphism monoid of the identity object is a commutative monoid. Proof, we already saw that phi embeds the endomorphism monoid of the identity object into the endomorphism monoid of the identity functor on C, and therefore the claim of the corollary follows directly from our lemma. So here are some problem and questions. Question one, Check the prototypical example of a monoidal category with all details. Question two. In the existence part of the proof related to the uniqueness of the identity object, check the diagram for rho. Question three. Given a monoidal category, show that fixing an object which is isomorphic to the identity object, we get a new monoidal category where our fixed object becomes the identity object and where the left and the right unitors can be computed using the identities which we saw in the last slides of the lecture. Question four, prove that for any pair FG of endomorphisms of the identity object, their tensor product can be computed in the following way. 
we start with iota, then we do g, then we do f, and then we apply the inverse of iota. Question five, construct an example of a monoidal category for which the natural inclusion of the endomorphism monoid of the identity object to the endomorphism monoid of the identity functor on C is not an isomorphism. Thank you very much and see you next time.